Good afternoon, you guys. I uh, made my way all the way down here, got myself all set up, and uh, realized the battery in my microphone was dead. So hopefully, I had to bring you in, you know, a little closer, so hopefully the wind or anything doesn't interfere. But look at you guys, it's not raining. <laughs> And I've even seen the sun peek out a little bit here and there. I know it's been kind of rainy off and on, and I was going to come down here, and then it started to rain, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should do this inside. Anyway, I decided to just, forever the optimist I am, so I decided to just go ahead and get set up anything anyway, and as I was doing all that, the rain stopped. So, and it's getting brighter out here. Clouds are still a bit iffy really gray back uh, in one direction and, and bits of uh, clear blue sky and clouds in the other. Don't know which way the clouds are moving, so I'm just going to hope for the best, right? That's the best we can do. <laughs> but I wanted to welcome you to Homemaker's Journal number 21 and uh, also to just kind of say that, you know, part of my goal with these uh, homemaker's journals is to share little bits, tidbits of information, things that I've been doing through my days. Um, a lot of things that I do don't really equate to a whole entire video, so then I tend to uh, uh, just have these little short things to share and I just put them all together sometimes and create a homemaker's journal with that. So the idea is to give you some encouragement in your homemaking, some hopefully some things that uh, you enjoy watching uh, and um, yeah just inspirational quotes or whatever is on my mind or whatever when I go to put these together. So I hope you enjoy today's homemaker's journal. I have a few different various things to share with you um, and uh, a lot of them have to do with, of course, things in the kitchen. It's been, I got hair going everywhere here with the wind, it's been um, a, a continued, has continued to be rainy, although today I am in a sweater and sitting out here, it's about 60 degrees, so to me that feels awesome uh, to finally be out of the 40s. This has felt like the winter that just will not end. And so to be able to sit outside here with you today and be in a sweater and even just the ability to get outside, there goes that here, my bangs. Even just the ability to be outside here with you today is so wonderful to me. And, uh, and I've continued to just be as grateful and thankful as possible for all the blessings in my life and the blessings of each day, rain or shine. And, uh, you know, but when the sun does come out, it makes me a very happy person. I get like this boost of inspiration. I get this boost of motivation and, uh, and I love that. So that's why I decided today, it's like, you know what? It's not a perfect day, but it's a beautiful day out and I'm gonna come outside and talk with you. I uh, made myself some green tea before I came down here. One thing I can say about all this cool weather and uh, long wintry type feeling days is that I've really gotten into teas and I've shared that uh, with a few other homemakers journals and so lately I've been drinking green tea so I kind of go back and forth and find something and drink it till I'm done with it and then move on to something else you know so right now it's green tea and I put it in my thermal cup so it will stay hot while I sit out here So I've kind of done this like a little bit of a series on, um, you know, creative use of leftovers. I've made videos of it, I've added things in Homemaker's Journal to give you ideas and inspiration. And that's what this next uh, bit is about. Uh, it was a, a time, a day that I was cleaning out things in my freezer, found stuff, it's like, oops, <laughs> you know, something that gets stuck behind something or drops down in the freezer. So I'm going to show you how I took my freezer items and refrigerator items and turned them into some really amazing soup. And we did indeed eat on this for a, a couple days, I think, and it was delicious. Well, I've got a little bit of freezer and refrigerator clean out going on today and I intend to make a nice pot of soup. And I'm pretty sure by the time I'm done with all these bits and pieces and I turn them into some wonderful soup, it'll probably feed us for at least a couple days. So let me show you what I have. Out of the freezer, I have in here a 
uh, ch chicken, uh, chicken bones, that is. Uh, last week, I roasted a whole chicken. We ate, I think, four meals off of it, and when it was done, I put all the bones and any of the liquid that you can see here from when I roasted it into this bag. I also took the meat that I had left, and I cut that up, and I put it into here because I figured that would make another meal. Also in the re in my freezer, I had another bag of chicken bones. So these chicken bones for sure are going into my Instant Pot to make some delicious tasting broth. Now the last two nights we had some pork ribs. I saved the bones from that, so I'm gonna mix them together. And I have mixed pork and chicken bones together many times and it makes a really flavorful broth. We also had one of our little pork ribs left, so I'm going to take the meat off of that and just set it aside, even though it's not a whole lot of meat, it's okay, and I'll be throwing that bone in the whole pot as well. Then, as I was going through the freezer, I found some uh, ham that I had cut up quite a while ago. You can see it's even got little freezer ice <laughs> crystals at the bottom, because I've had it in there a little bit. Anyway, so I'm going to throw that into the soup as well. And in my refrigerator, I had this much left of some homemade rice aroni from my DIY rice aroni mix. We had had that with, um, a couple nights ago, we had had it with our dinner. So I had that kind of just rattling around in there. So it's like, okay, uh, I will set that aside to put in later because right now the first thing that I'm going to do is make the broth. I just heated that up in the microwave, that uh, one sausage piece in to make it easier to remove the meat from it. So I'm going to set this aside to add later and throw that into my pot as well. Since I had so many bones in there, I added 12 cups of water, which will be more than I need for my soup, but that will give me broth that I can either put in the freezer or use another day. And I added a tablespoon of salt. And I've got my Instant Pot set for 90 minutes. I'm just going to give this a really long cook time so that we can extract as many of the good flavors as possible from those bones. And it's still early in the morning, so I'm just going to now not even think about this anymore and move on to do some other things. And I'll get back to this in just a little while. Now that my bone broth is all done, I'm going to strain that out and get busy making my soup. After I had finished straining out my broth, I grabbed some vegetables that I had in the refrigerator and just chopped that up. I had some leftover celery and carrot sticks from the other night. I chopped that up along with the onion and some peppers and a few mushrooms. At that point, I heated up my soup pot and threw a little bit of oil in there put my vegetables in there and let them cook until they had softened down quite a bit. I also had some frozen peas in the freezer that I wanted to use up, so I threw those in. You could do any vegetables that you have available to you, whatever you like. Uh, at that point, it was time to add in all the meat. I stirred that up to kind of mix it well, added my rice, my leftover rice aroni and I started adding my broth that I had made. When I felt like it was okay, I gave it a taste test to see what it needed seasoning wise. I added some salt, I added a little bit of Johnny's seasoning salt, some garlic, and a little bit of Italian seasoning. In the end, I added another cup of broth. I think in total I had six cups that I added. I turned down the heat, put the lid on, and let that simmer. This was the leftover broth that I had, and that was what I ended up canning the other day in that, if you saw my canning video. 
and it was time at that point to dish it up. This was absolutely delicious and we really enjoyed it. A few episodes back in Homemaker's Journal, I shared with you the fact that I had some food that had definitely expired past its date and I really wanted to find some use for it and one of that was sweetened condensed milk. It's honestly not something I really buy unless I have something specifically in mind for it, uh, which I think one of my kids had actually left these in, in uh, my pantry because they were moving or whatever and didn't want to take it with them. So uh, I got a couple good ideas from you guys, and but in the end I searched around for a recipe and found one for pound cake. If you can imagine, that uses the sweetened condensed milk. So I went ahead and put that recipe together. I got to tell you, it was a really easy recipe to put together. It went together very fast and was probably some of the best, most flavorful tasting pound cake that I have had in a long time. So I will most certainly be putting the link below. So if you have a can just kind of, you know, hidden away in your pantry and you're wondering what to do, then this is a good option. And even if you decided to just go out and buy a can for this, it, it's well worth it. In fact, I had thought of doing that uh, recently here. It's like, maybe I should just pick up another can and make sure I have it in my, on my pantry for another pound cake because it turned out so good. I'm always amazed at how fast baby chicks grow and uh, the, the chicken condo, chicken mansion <laughs> that my son-in-law has been building has turned out to be so good. What, we're, what he's waiting for is the rain to stop and dry days to come so that he can actually finish painting it and get the outside finished and put uh, a chicken area for the little chicks to come and be able to get outside but for now they are enjoying the ability to stretch their wings they have lots of space now inside and uh, are really just Let's loving hi. 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 Hi, Luna. Well, I can say that while these days have been rainy, it has been my objective to uh, always try to come up with some sort of project to work on throughout the day, whether I'm cleaning or organizing or, uh, you know, doing, doing something. And one of the things I did one, after, one rainy afternoon was to uh, make another set of my uh, no-sew scrap fabric bookmarks. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it here or in the description box below so you can go back and see they are so simple to make and um, i give you more instructions in the other video but what i have found is how well received these are by people i made a batch of them and uh, other than a couple that i've used i gave away most of them so i was uh, desperately wanting to make some more because they're just kind of a sweet thing to have to be able to give away and of course to be able to use as well Well, one of the things that you can definitely tell when you live in the Pacific Northwest is when it's about to rain. It's like the whole, it just feels like rain in the air. And I am feeling that now as I've been sitting out here recording this. The skies have gotten more and more gray. And that patch of gray skies is actually moving kind of right above me. But I have just been so grateful to be able to be outside today and talking to you all. I really hope that you enjoyed this 
uh, episode of uh, Homemaker's Journal and you found something useful and helpful in it, or it just inspired you in your own homemaking, that's kind of, like I said at the beginning, that's kind of the goal. I would like to be able to inspire you and just give you new things to think about uh, on each episode. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to take all this camera equipment inside and myself inside before the rain hits. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.